Welcome to Pacific Crest Transformers. Today we're going to cover our instructional videos for taking an oil sample from your transformer. Um, oftentimes we need to take a DGA or dissolved gas analysis um, oil sample from your transformer to monitor the health or the operation of the transformer. This gives you a snapshot in time of the transformer's condition and this is best done by taking a syringe, oil syringe sample. Um, first step is that you check your transformer, make sure that you've complied with all your safety regulations for your site for good safe sampling. Second step is to monitor the transformer and make sure that you have a positive pressure and this is done by looking at the pressure vacuum gauge located toward the upper portion of the front of the transformer tank. You need to make sure that you have at least a one pound positive pressure on the tank to allow you to take your sample. Having a vacuum condition on your tank will uh, cause a safety hazard and possible you can draw air into the vessel um, by allowing um, the syringe to uh, actually feed backwards into the transformer. So that's an important step to make sure you have positive pressure. Now we're going to go out to our factory floor and we're going to visit a transformer that we're going to use for our subject today. And we also, Pacific Crest has a procedure that is available to you in PDF format. You can ask through our sales or customer service department. Welcome to Pacific Crest Transformers instructional videos. Today's topic is taking an oil sample to obtain a dissolved gas analysis uh, sample, which is better known as a DGA. Uh, Pacific Crest does have a document that helps you walk through these steps, which is available in PDF form on our website. Now we're at the base of our transformer. We have all of our materials here ready. We have rags, we have our absorbent towels. We use the pig brand, which are um, about uh, two foot square and now we have them laid out under the valve. This is the case we have a one inch valve with a drain port, the side sampling port, we have a waste can, we have our Tigon hose and our syringe which is in front and it's ready. So at this point we want to double check and make sure we have positive pressure on the tank. In this case we have two pounds of positive pressure and that has been confirmed. Now we will get our syringe ready. It comes out of the plastic bag. It comes shipped to you from different assorted labs with dry air inside the, just ahead of the plunger. The valve is in the shut off position, which is all the way back. Now we'll prepare our area, get our syringe ready. And the first step is to remove the protective cap from the sampling port. The next thing we will do is make sure that the valve is in the off position or completely closed. And we'll get a crescent wrench and then just slightly loosen the uh, adapter nipple. Now we'll fit, make sure we open it up a little bit and then fit our Tigon hose onto the nipple. The other end of our hose will now be inserted onto the syringe, like so. Now we have our syringe ready. We open up the sampling port to allow good oil flow, and it's ready. Now we place our syringe into the open position over our drain. So now we know we have the open position. We've confirmed that and we go ahead and turn the valve to the on position. Approximately a half a turn open is sufficient until you get the oil to flow and you'll watch that through your Tigon hose and it's now draining into the waste oil bucket. It 
it's good to flush about one quart of oil into the waste container and we've confirmed that we have good flow. The next step is that we are now going to purge the syringe and we'll do that completely three times. So we're flushing the syringe and this allows us to get a good clean sample and that all of the oilways are open and clear. The syringe is graduated. In this case, it's 20 milliliters. And you just hold some back pressure with your other hand on the plunger as it opens and fills the syringe. This way you maintain control on the plunger and it doesn't get away from you. Once you have it full, you go ahead and push the fluid out the drain of the valve, hold it tight, and then start the process again. As you can see, the oil is flowing into the syringe again. Holding the back pressure on the plunger, maintaining control. Once we get to the 20 milliliter graduate, then that will complete this flushing cycle and we'll go ahead and push the oil back out into the waste container. Now we're filling for the third time, third and final flushing cycle. It's same as before. Now in this case, we'll go ahead and push that fluid back out of the syringe. And you don't want to get too much in a hurry. You want to make a constant oil flow because you do not want air bubbles in the oil. That will uh, cause your sample to have too much uh, oxygen and nitrogen and can skew the oil sample at the lab. So you're maintaining a slow level, filling level, and all the way to the 20 milliliter graduate. Now that we have it, we've closed our valve and we still have oil flow, so now we'll go ahead and turn off the main valve handle fully clockwise until the oil flow comes to a stop. Then we can go ahead and remove the Tigon tubing from the syringe carefully and then set our syringe aside. And you can see we have a good sample. And then we'll go ahead and make sure our valve is closed and then take the other end of the Tigon tubing off and hold it as such that we drain all of the oil into the waste container. Once we have the oil out of the hose, we can set it here so that it stays contained and we don't get any oil spills on the ground. Now we'll close off the sampling port by hand. Go ahead and clean all the excessive oil that's on the port and then tighten. And this does not have to be super tight, it just has to be firm. So it's about a half a turn. Once that's tightened, we can confirm it. Everything is off and go ahead and replace the protective cap onto the valve. This completes the sampling process and then you clean up your area. You want to take your syringe and put it back. Make sure that it's no air bubbles or no, nothing that's in the oil. You have a good sample. In this case, it's good. We'll put it in a protective bag and back into the, the uh, protection foam in the box.